Hello everyone, welcome again to another series of video from uh, Electronics Eternity. So this time around we'll be looking at uh, a battery indicator module, uh, which is also known as a bar or dot display driver, LM3914. Uh, so uh, this is a display across 10 LEDs, which will indicate the level of voltage, right? So. Uh, it's uh, highly versatile the reason being is uh, because we can use it across uh, various voltages starting from uh, I think it can go up to maximum of 25 volts so any voltage in between you can use it and uh, and because of that simple reason it is highly versatile right so and uh, also when uh, for when you're creating uh, electronic projects uh this chip becomes very useful because every project would require power source and or battery so having this pow power indicator is is really a good add-on to your project okay so uh note the name again it's lm3914 and uh, you can always uh, find it uh, find it uh uh, data sheet and, and to learn more about that right so in this video i'll be covering a lot about uh the usage and how do we construct the circuit right so right underneath this you will see a very complicated and messy circuit but uh, do not worry about it i will uh, share you uh, like much easier uh, circuit uh, connection to view and uh, also you can uh, view this from the data sheet itself right so uh, if i were to like show how it's connected on the breadboard it would look like something like this okay so whenever you need to uh, refer the connection to in a breadboard you can always refer the picture that i just shown you and not to forget it will be available in our board right so now i've shown you that uh, sorry i've mentioned that uh, this is a battery voltage indicator or whatever power voltage indicator right so uh, what happens is that there is a pin 5 which acts like the signal pin so depending on the voltage that is a channeled pin 5 uh, certain numbers of led will light up okay so when uh, so based on that we can tell uh, what's the power level or is it too low is it just moderate or if it's full right so i connected a potentiometer over here to my pin 5 so what happens when i change the voltage my very first led lights up right as you can see the first if i further turn the knob to increase the voltage you can see more numbers of led turns on right let me just show you as you can see the second right now one point to note over here is that i'm using 8 volt right so uh, 8 volt it's some somewhere around 8 volt right it's uh, 3.7 plus another 3.7 it's 7.4 but then when i measured it across voltmeter it gives me somewhere around 8 right so when 8 volt is dispersed across 10 leds it would mean that uh an addition of 0 0.8 volt will be needed to light up one led for an example if you can look over here it's zero volts right so let's just say if i slightly increase that to 0 0.8 let it settle all right so somewhere close to 0 0.8 and and it's showing uh, the first led if i go close to 1.6 the second led goes up right it's somewhere between there as you can see the value revolves around 1.4 1.5 right so the third one goes to if my led is up at 2.4 then my third led blinks sorry my third led lights up sorry i went a bit too far there okay it's somewhere around 2.3 2.4 okay so that's the whole idea about it whatever voltage 
uh, supply that you have you, you can uh, you can use it with the chip and the the way you set up the circuit will allow you to get uh, a, a truest reflection of what is the battery voltage at this point of time right at a given point of time okay so uh, i've shown you how pretty much the uh, you know end result would look like and and also uh, just just for the record uh, even if i take any of two leds for example if i'm taking out this one or two leds it would still work let me just show you right see i've just taken out my two leds over here and it still works oh it's a bit too blurry you can't see it let me just turn on all right i, I don't have my two leds over there as you can see uh, let me take that out okay as you can see so but it would still work right so instead of wasting 10 volts sorry 10 leds you can easily use uh three leds to make make it work right sorry my power connection is a bit weak right it would still work so that's the good thing about this you can take out the LEDs that you don't want and only display certain LEDs for example uh, the one which is at the lowest one or the one at which is at the middle or the one which is the highest right so sorry my connection is a bit loose so that's what good about this and uh, I'm not sure why is it okay my voltage connection is a bit weak oh sorry my bad i think it's my pin number nine okay so uh so you can use you can take out the leds in between and it would still function as normal right so this is an example of it and uh, that that's the final result on how it would look so uh, let's look at how we can construct the circuit and uh, uh, how do we set our reference voltage or not not to say reference voltage how we set our values of our uh, resistor 1 and resistor 2 which is needed in the circuit uh, which would help to make the IC uh, work as we want it okay all right so let's look at a bit on the theories okay now let's look at the theories right so this is my own notes that I have prepared uh, nothing to worry it will be still uh, available in my blog so you can refer it later on okay so now when we look at the circuit right so i've written this down for for the ease of reference so pin 1 pin 10 and pin 8 uh, from pin 10 to 18 all are connected to the cathodes of 10 leds that we have right so that makes it simple now pin 2 and pin 4 over here are connected to ground and pin 3 over here is connected to pin 9 uh, pin 6 is connected to pin 7, pin 6 connected to pin 7. Uh, pin 5 is the voltage signal, uh, as I have mentioned earlier. So depending on the voltage at the pin 5, it will then decide how many LEDs that should be uh, should be on at a given time. Okay. So pin 9 is the mode pin. Uh, as, as we all know, this chip can function as a bar display or a dot display so uh, pin mode is where we set those uh, type of display so when it's high it's going to be in a bar display and when it's low it's going to produce a dot display all right so pin 8 is connected at the juncture of r1 and r2 okay so uh, looking at this might be a little confusing uh, you can always look at the uh, frizz diagram or, or the breadboard diagram that i have shared so once you look at it both then i think it would give it a better understanding okay so uh let's i'm, I'm not going to go through everything because this is available for your reading in the blog so uh i want to just go straight to the equations right so uh this is the one of the equation that is found in the data sheet so this will basically tell us how much 
current that we want to be supplied to our LEDs, right? So uh, a good amount of current would be 10 milliampere. So I'm, I'm just substituting in that value 10 milliampere into the same equation over here, which is shown uh, over here. And uh, as, as the outcome, we would get 1.25 kilo ohm, right? So my first resistor over here, over here is would be 1.21 kilo ohm. Sorry, 1.25 kilo ohm, right? So depending on whatever stock of LED that you have, you can use anything close to 1.25. Uh, it is totally understandable that it's not going to be perfect, right? Some of us might have 1.21, some of us might have 1.25. Uh, God knows how, how many resistors are there in the world. So whichever one that you have closest to the value, feel free to use it, right? Uh, but just don't go jumping around to 2.2k ohm or uh, something which is very less like 900 ohms it shouldn't be too further away okay because that will Im impact uh, how the chip functions when it comes to lighting up how many numbers of LED or what LED at a given time right so in, in short it basically affects the way that the chip functions okay so now we have figured out what is our R2 and we, we also know what's the current that we would want to supply to each and uh, every one of our LEDs. Now let's look at reference voltage. So reference voltage is the voltage that you are checking for. For example, uh, your voltage supply is 8 volt, right? So when the battery is at 8 volt or when the power is at 8 volt, you would want to display all 10 LEDs. Right, so that's what reference voltage means. It's what's the, as as, as it's uh, very explanatory. What's the reference voltages? What's the voltage of our power supply? What's the maximum voltage for our usage? Right. So, so uh, in this scenario, I'm using eight volts. Right, like I mentioned earlier, and this is the formula. One point two five is a constant and 1.25 kilo ohm is the RH R1 value that we have already established uh, substituting this value into the equation will give us that our R2 is 6.75 right so uh, so one, one thing to note here your R2 and R1 might not be exactly the same because you might want to give supply a different current to your uh, LEDs uh, which then will, will change what's your R1 value. Okay, so, uh, but generally 10 milliampere is, is the, uh, is a good number, right? So, I'm using 10 milliampere, but some of you might be feeling that uh, this is not enough, you want to try 15 or you want to even drop it to 8 milliampere, it's entirely up to you, right? So, when you change the current value, it will automatically then change the resistor 1 value. So the same applies over here. Once you have figured your resistor 1 value, you go to your reference voltage formula. Your voltage might be different. For example, your voltage might be 5 volts. Right? So when you key in 5 volts over here and you maintain the constant as it is and your R1 value could be different, then it is understandable that your R2 value would be different as well. So, which is why it's highly versatile. Uh, regardless of what voltage supply that you have you just need to play around with your R1 and R2 value to, to make it work for you to make it suit your operation to make it suit for your uh, voltage supply what's the voltage level right so that's why it's it's uh, highly versatile and I feel like it's very much customizable okay so uh, that's about R1 and R2. So the moment you have figured out R1 and R2, you got your circuits connection right. 90% uh, of the time, it's, it's going to work. So you just have to worry about that part. So that's the most important one: R1, R2, and the circuit connection, right? Okay. Over here we have a table. So I've just simply plotted this table just to give you an understanding, right? So uh, let's just say if my what happens when my reference voltage increases uh, uh, with respect to how many LEDs being light up at the moment, right? So this value over here within this table, uh, let me just highlight that. 
so these are the right these numbers are the signal uh, signal voltage which is the voltage supplied at pin 5 so when when the reference voltage is at 8 volt we would need 0 0.8 volt at, at the pin 5 to light up 1 right and, and so does if we need to light up 2 uh, you need 1.6 if you need to light up 7 voltage you need sorry if you need to light up 7 LEDs you need 5.6 volts so it increases uh, the current needed to light up an additional one LED increases as your voltage reference increases so either way the idea is your reference voltage is divided across 10 LEDs right so uh, which I, I feel it's good uh, because you could have a various voltage supply or various VCC supply that you have but it's still going to work depending on how you have constructed your circuit and how you have constructed sorry what R1 and R2 resistors value that you have chosen okay so I, I hope this explanation makes sense to you and uh, if you have any comments feel free to uh, shoot out so I guess that's all for our video today uh, thank you good luck at, uh, good luck trying don't forget to like and subscribe until then